The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I am your host, the man from Leng. Thank you very much for joining me today. We are streaming this morning, or in the afternoon, or evening, wherever you may be. I hope everyone is uh, healthy and safe out there amidst these uh, very unusual times. We are uh, playing Return to the Dunwich Legacy today with, uh, we are going to, uh, well, not finish off the campaign, but we will tackle Where Doom Awaits with uh, Ashcan Pete and his trusty sidekick Duke. Uh, as you may remember, we uh, played the, uh, on the uh, last, one of the last streams before we uh, took a little detour to play some Winifred Habamock, we uh, put uh, Ashcan Pete through Undimensioned and Unseen, he managed to uh, take down one of the massive broods, but uh, the others escaped into the wild, so that is where we are going to uh, start off today. We uh, haven't made uh, any changes uh, really to the deck, so it's going to be uh, an interesting uh, an interesting game indeed, uh, since this is uh, one of the ones they made a significant change to uh, uh, when they re uh, in the return to box. Hi, Juicy. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Hope everyone is uh, is doing well. Before we get started, I would uh, just like to uh, to thank everyone and uh, say hello to uh, thank all the patrons of the channel for their tremendous support. Uh, these people have gone above and beyond to bring you the content that I create, and uh, I couldn't do it without them. So thank you very much. If you'd like to become a patron of the channel. Uh, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your rewards. That would be awesome. So here is the uh, the deck that we have been playing, Ashcan Pete. It is uh, based on the deck Put the Dog in the Corner by Aram Horror. Uh, this is the level 0 version, but uh, we haven't made all that many changes to it. Uh, with the experience points that we have earned, we've picked up a couple copies of... Uh, uh, test of Will to cancel treacheries, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, not too many changes. Of course, we've got uh, Charisma, because now we've got a ton of allies, due to our... Uh, because this is the uh, Dunwich Legacy. Hi, Byzantium. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're uh, doing well uh, in Italy. Uh, we are... Hi, Dan Smith. Welcome to the stream. Uh, so there's a, uh, we've got a copy of Scrapper. Hi Enoch. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we've got a copy of Scrapper. Uh, we've got Charisma because this is the Dunwich Legacy after all and there are a ton of allies to work with. And uh, a Test of Will which came in very handy during uh, Blood on the Altar. I realized I should probably have a copy or two of Cornered in this deck but uh, I have not... Uh, have not put it in here. Uh, this deck has been doing pretty well, uh, all things considered, so uh, I am content to leave it as it is. Hi Darren, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it today. Uh, what else is there? That's about it. I think we are uh, set up and uh, we're ready to go in Octagon. Uh, it threw me for a loop this morning when I was uh, getting everything set up. The uh, Streamlabs treats Octagon now as an actual game. Well, that's not right, is it? Let's see if we can improve this here. There we go. Yeah, it's uh, it's behaving weirdly with Octagon, so hopefully there won't be too, uh, too many troubles when we're uh, playing. But uh, yeah, usually I just use Windows Capture to capture it, but uh, it actually treated it as a real-life game this time around, so... There we go. So this is uh, where Doom awaits, of course. This is the fifth scenario in the Dunwich Legacy cycle. It is uh, notorious as uh, because uh, unless you succeed in uh, passing this uh, scenario, your campaign ends. So uh, we are going to endeavor to, uh, to get through it. Uh, it is also notorious because of the base of the hill uh, um, location, which... Uh, was had instead of this forced reaction it had an investigate action 
which uh, locked you out of all of your basic investigation tricks. It hit uh, Ashcan Pete particularly hard because he could not use Duke at this location. So he had to investigate the old-fashioned way, which was uh, not easy for him, uh, owing to his two intellect. I know the last time that I played this with Ashcan Pete, I had uh, packed all sorts of uh, tech in the deck, uh, such as newspaper and whatnot, just to uh, to boost his intellect high enough so we could uh, discover the clues we needed in order to proceed. So this base of the hill, the warped and twisted base of the hill, is a four shroud location. Still not uh, very easy to investigate with three clues, and it is connected to each copy of Diverging Path. Forced, after you discover one or more clues from base of the hill, spend those clues and put that many random set-aside diverging path locations into play. You also have the resign option, but that's uh, that's a death sentence, so we won't be doing that. So yeah, that's a that's a much better, uh, a much much easier uh, way of doing it. It's got uh, it's still a tough place to investigate, but at least you can use all of your investigate tricks uh, when you're there. I assume that the ascending path is uh, similar, except you're putting uh, altering uh, the altered path locations into play. And uh, we've, of course, we've got Sentinel Hill, which is uh, the same. We'll need two clues to uh, to get up there. So, uh, is anything else changed? Uh, we need two clues in order to advance to uh, Act Two A. We have a new copy of Seth Bishop, Thrall of Yogsothoth. He's got five fight, four health per investigator, and five uh, evade, humanoid monster, abomination, and elite. He has retaliate. When he attacks you during the enemy phase, either move to another dimension after this attack, or Seth Bishop uh, deals plus two damage. Oh, maybe he's not in this one. He may not be in this one. No. This is a different. I need the uh, the other uh, Seth Bishop. I thought this guy added this. Uh, uh, let me check here. I want to see. Is this? Do we have the right Seth Bishop, or was he? Uh, do we need the old one? The old one's a lot easier. Let me see. Uh, probably not actually. He, I think he might be lost in time and space, Seth. Which would make sense. Uh, yes, so we need the other Seth Bishop. I'll go get him. I just assumed when I saw a new Seth Bishop that we needed him, but uh, we do not. So we will bring uh, this guy along. So Seth Bishop is the same. He's uh, just uh, he's got five uh, five fight three health per investigator five of eight and retaliate. He's worth a victory point, so hopefully uh, we can uh, send Duke after him and uh, take him out. Have I had a chance to play more with Winnie? Yes, I have. I have played the first. I played her through the opening scenarios of the Circle Undone. Uh, Basically, what I did was take out all of the succeed by two tech and just play with uh, good old-fashioned rogue cards, and uh, she functioned much much better. I was able to uh, to uh, post a W in uh, the circle undone. It was a very uh, tense game, but uh, and I seemed to spin my wheels for for a great uh, a great deal of time until I finally managed to. Uh, to uh, get to the uh, the witch's circle, but uh, once I was there, I think I, I had a backstab in my hand, so uh, killing Annette was pretty easy. And then uh, I played uh, the second one at Death's Doorstep, and we uh, did very well in that as well. So, uh, yeah, I, th I find that the succeed by two mechanic is not very uh, reliable at... Uh, at level zero, I think that's owing a lot to the fact that uh, that uh, opportunist level uh, zero is a succeed by three and not a succeed by two. So being able to reuse it is not very reliable. And then of course you've got um, lucky cigarette case is succeed by two. Hi Peter, welcome to the stream. 
and but that's your card draw and so uh, unless you succeed by two a lot you can end up uh, not drawing the cards you need and you end up stalling and spinning your wheels and whatnot so I took all that all that stuff out and just went with uh, with good rogue fundamentals uh, I was using Leo uh, as my ally and uh, man Leo is still awesome because he uh, he gave me all the actions I needed in order to uh, all those extra actions really added up and uh, yeah when he was able to uh, do it I also changed I added uh, I added the Tennessee sour mash and and uh, guts to the deck and while she still suffers pretty badly against um, against willpower tests uh, between the sour mash and uh, guts she is able to uh, pass the occasional test if necessary um, she's still pretty much doomed most of the time but uh, I know the the thing in circle on in the uh, the witching hour anyway is a uh, a lot of those cards that enter your uh, threat area have uh, um, that enter your threat area have willpower tests on them, which is difficult. But uh, if you use the uh, the text about the um, exhausted witches at your location, then you can discard them without too much trouble. So that's the way I went. I was I wasn't trying to take those willpower tests. I was just trying to. Uh, trying to uh i just wait for a witch to show up i'd exhaust it and then i I'd, I'd get rid of the cards i needed uh, juicy says he's had great success with winnie using pickpocketing and lucky cigarette case to build a, a strong draw edge and yeah uh, i think it can uh, it can definitely work it's uh for whatever reason i just haven't had a ton of success with uh with lucky cigarette case and getting it to uh, up and running maybe I need to just draw more aggressively for it and and get it down on the table but I find that uh, it seems with the succeed by two is that if you start to struggle to succeed by two then you're going to struggle even more to succeed by two because you're not drawing the cards you need to succeed by two in the first place and so you can get uh, get ground down but uh, she did very well in circle undone in uh, the witching hour and uh, at death's doorstep i have not played um the secret name yet with her uh that is a pretty tough scenario and i'm not entirely sure she would uh, she will do very well in it but uh, i'll probably play it at some point in the week to come here and we'll see if she can uh, do it i did beat that scenario with the uh, ashcan pete but ashcan is he's in a class by himself because duke lets him zip around all of those locations and saves you a ton of actions and I, I don't think uh, Winifred has quite the same skill as uh, Ashken in that uh, department. Hi uh, Pista, welcome to the stream, glad you could make it. Well I think we are, uh, I think we're ready to go so let's uh, let's draw our opening hand uh, there's a minus five, an extra minus five token in the bag. The other important thing we I should mention is that because we did not kill Silas Bishop, we do not have to add. Uh, we do not have the conglomeration and spheres in of uh, spheres in play, which is very nice. And we didn't have to shuffle that encounter set into the uh, encounter deck. So the uh, the by grabbing all those clues in uh, Blood on the Altar, we uh, saved ourselves some mineral some real headaches uh, in this scenario so let's see what our opening hand is uh, we're gonna want uh, we are going to want uh, magnifying glasses and whatnot if we can get them uh, we have our across time and space weakness which we will uh, get rid of there's a test of will uh, the arcane studies is a keeper that's a plus uh, that's plus intellect, so we'll need that. Uh, but s these other cards, I think we're going to ditch in order to find some magnifying glasses if we can. There's a lucky. There's racked by nightmares, a deny existence, and a glimmer of hope. Are we going to get a mag? We did get a magnifying glass right uh, on the last card, so we have uh, we have a way of investigating. 
that will not be uh, plus we've got our, our our arcane study so that's good as well of course we only have three resources because uh, Ashcan Pete is indebted as always and uh, let's uh, we'll uh, start here so welcome Matthew glad you could make it today uh, so let's gain our actions I think our first uh, first thing we'll do is we'll play a magnifying glass for free or for uh, without taking an action so our will our intellect will go up to three and that will help us uh, investigate here um, we could also put down uh, this scenario Peter can be pretty straightforward it uh, it's it sort of depends the old one you could really sort of get stalled at the base of the hill uh, if you didn't have the investigate that you needed but I found it pretty straightforward if you can get yourself moving as much as I'd love to get the arcane studies down right now that would uh, we're not gonna have any resources to use it anyway so uh, we might as well just start investigating so I think our first action will be an investigate using Duke we will go five versus four and we might as well commit a glimmer of hope to make that a six versus four. Let's see what the chaos bag says. Chaos bag gives us an elder thing, which is a minus X. Discard the top two cards of your deck. X is the total printed cost of the discarded cards. That's a zero. And that's a one. So we lose a uh, we lose a live and learn and a test of will, but we do succeed on the uh, the investigate action. So we will uh, grab a clue, but the forced effect will trigger. So we will pull out a uh, a diverging our first diverging path. I shuffled these up earlier, so we should be uh, good to go. Um. Hmm. I would sort of like to uh, to duke into this location, but perhaps we perhaps we play the arcane studies now and take a resource. Uh, we don't really have a. I, don't want to discard the lucky or the uh, arcane resources. Let's draw a card. See if we can't find something. There is our uh, there is a weakness across time and space. Discard the top three cards of our deck, so we lose Madame Labranche, Doctor Henry Armitage, and a lucky. That's kind of costly. And I think I'm just going to play the arcane studies for the time being while we have it and we'll gain a resource during the upkeep phase and that'll give us a little bit of extra oomph when we do uh, when we do investigate all right we go to upkeep we draw a take heart and we have a resource to go so we're uh, we've got uh, a lucky and our arcane studies that we can use and we're going to go to our first mythos phase of the game. For Doom of 12, we will uh, draw our first encounter card, which is going to be Vortex of Time. Each investigator at a Sentinel Hill location tests two. I should actually, that reminds me, I have a, uh, I have a trauma from one of the, one of the, uh, scenarios. Each investigator at a Sentinel Hill location tests four willpower. Each investigator who fails takes two damage. So we're going 4v4. Um, what's the chaos bag like? Eh, not, not very good. Um... I don't really have a... I can deny existence if I fail. Or I can take heart. I think I'm going to take heart and just try to uh, to fail this thing. Chaos Bag gives us a minus three, so that's good. I was never going to get... Uh, I was never going to get that high. 
Uh, so we're going to draw two cards. There's a Glimmer and a Madame Labranche, and I'm going to gain two resources. And I'm going to take two damage, uh, which I think I will deny. So we did get some more resources and Madame Labranche, which is excellent. That will uh, go a long way to uh, to getting us uh, cards and resources uh, that we need. So we go to the next uh, investigate phase, investigation phase. I think I'm going to play Madame Labranche. So we've got uh, our ally out. Let's duke into this uh, into this location. And see what it is. It is the Eerie Glade. It is a four shroud location with one clue. After you reveal Eerie Glade, discard the top two cards of your deck for each action you have remaining. Uh, so I have one action remaining, so we're going to lose two cards. We lose the Track Shoes and an Arcane Studies. We are going 5v4. Uh, I'm going to go 6v4, and then I'm going to use Madame Labranche to gain a resource. So 6v4, Chaos Bag says Elder Sign. Wow, sweet. So we get to ready Duke. And that's very nice because we uh, we grab this clue and then we've got Duke ready to go. Uh, we can uh, Duke back into the base of the hill. So let's do that. We will uh, Duke in there and see if we can't uh, pick up another uh, uh, clue. We're going to go 5v4. Uh, I'm going to commit the Glimmer of Hope to go 6v4. Chaos Bag says Skull, that is a minus one. So we do succeed and grab another clue. Which brings out another Divergent Path. So far, so good. So we've got both of our Diverging Paths out. Uh, hopefully this one has a clue on it, so we can grab a uh, grab that clue next turn, and then we'll be off to the ascending path. So we go, we pull a resourceful. That is very nice to see because that is uh, that will get us one of our cards back that's in the discard pile, and there are some good ones in there right now. Uh, notably, the track shoes would be very, uh, very nice to have. And, or a test of will would be pretty good too. So, uh, some nice tar nice juicy targets for resourceful uh, next, uh, if we do uh, do so next turn. We go to the mythos phase. Five of 12 doom. Our encounter card is going to be a crazed Shagoth nearest altered location. Well, that uh, just whiffs because there are no uh, altered locations. I'm kind of surprised they didn't change that card uh, with something else that uh, would be more impactful. But uh, the crazed Shagoth will just whiff because there are no altered locations on the table. So I am uh, absolutely fine with that. It is turn three. Uh, we have another diverging path on the table, so we might as well duke in to see that one. It's kind of risky with three. Uh, uh, maybe we take an action here before we do that. Um, we could just draw a card. Uh, we've got Beyond the Veil as a potentially a problem. Um, 
Let's draw a card first. We'll get a last chance. Now we'll duke in. So we only have one action remaining. Zero clues. Hi, Leander. We are playing Return to Where Doom Awaits. So after you reveal Destroyed Path, place one Doom on it. Investigate if you succeed. Instead of discovering clues, remove one Doom from Destroyed Path. So we are going 5v3. Uh, So we'll see how we do. Chaos Bag gives us a minus three. Do I care enough about that doom? Um, no, I don't. I'm not going to, uh, I am not going to bother with that. Uh, let's pitch a card uh, to ready Duke. Eh, not many good options here. I guess we're going to have to go with the Lucky. And we will duke back into the base of the hill. And see if we can't grab this last clue. Um, we're 5v4. We'll commit the last chance. Uh, no, we can commit the... Let's commit the uh, resourceful 6v4. Um, yeah, 6v4. Chaos bag says zero. So we grab this uh, clue and get to put our last diverging path into play. And uh, we get a card back which is definitely going to be a test of will. Now we could go, we could take a test of will, which we could use to cancel Beyond the Veil if it becomes an issue, or we could take Deny Existence and just eat the, eat the, uh, um, we could just eat the entire, uh, I'm going to take test because it's a little more, uh, we can use it to cancel other things if necessary. Uh, we can't take deny anyway because it's, it's not a survivor card, so forget that. So we grab a test of will uh, just in case we draw beyond the veil. And we're in pretty good shape. We get a live and learn during the upkeep phase, so that will be helpful as well. And we go to our next Mythos phase. 7 of 12 Doom in play. Turn 4, our encounter card is going to be Rights Howled. Discard the top 3 cards of each Investigator's deck. Each Investigator at an altered location shuffles each weakness in his or her discard pile into his deck. Uh, we are not at an altered location, so we're just discarding the top 3 cards. So we lose a magnifying glass, a last chance, and fight or flight. Yeah, that uh, beyond the veil, if that beyond the veil hits, we'll need to definitely cancel that because we're already at 13 cards in our draw deck. All right, turn four. Turn four, we will. I don't really want to duke into this with two actions remaining, but... So let's take an action to gain a resource, I think, and then we'll duke in. And we'll see how what this one does. This is a two-shroud location with one clue. After you reveal abandoned camp, lose two resources for each action you have performed this round. I have performed two actions. Including this one if applicable. So I lose four resources. That's kind of annoying. 
but we are going 5v2 on the investigate. So that's not not terrible. We draw a minus four. Uh, let's play the live and learn to uh, we will uh, after we fail the skill test we get plus two skill value for the next uh, we get to attempt it again so we're gonna go uh, 5v2 we're gonna go 7v2 this time and we get a minus one so we do grab the clue we have the clues we need and we must immediately spend them to advance All right, so the arcane presence masking the path further up the hill has uh, has faded. Remove all clues from each location in play. So uh, now we are using Ascending the Hill ver version 2. We have one action remaining. We will just head back to the base of the hill. So yeah, we've uh, it's turn four, and we've already uh, cleared the base of the hill, so we will be moving on up to... Uh, we might as well use Madame to grab ourselves a resource before we head into the upkeep phase. We pick up an overpower during upkeep, so if we need to fight anything... Uh, we go to turn five. We've got 8 of 12 Doom, and our encounter card is Visions of Futures Past. Test 5 Willpower for each point you fail by. Discard the top card of your deck. Uh, do I reveal the Ascending Path? Oh, I probably, yeah, I probably have to, because I can't get there otherwise. Thank you, Peter. Uh, yeah, so Ascending Path, 4 Shroud Location with 3 Clues. After you discover one or more clues from Ascending Path, spend those clues and put the uh, that many random set-aside altered path locations. So we need two clues to advance to Sentinel Peak. Before we can do any of that, though, we've got to deal with this Visions of Future Past. Uh, so we are going to test five. Uh, it's 4v5. Chaos Bag gives us a Cultist, which is a Reveal Another Token. Cancel the effects and icons of each skill card. Well, that's fine. We don't have, uh, we didn't commit any uh, tokens or whatnot. So let's look at the top token. It is a tablet. That's a minus two. Uh, yes, it is, minus two. So we are at 3v5. Uh, sorry, 2v5, so we discard three cards. We lose a resourceful, a test of will, and Dr. Francis Morgan. So we have nine cards left in our deck, which uh, does not bode well if we draw Beyond the Veil, but we do have a test of will ready for that if, uh, if necessary. Uh, we get our three actions. We can duke into the ascending path. Hi Charles, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. I'm about to play this tonight with Rex and Zoe. Yes. Well, Rex should uh, Rex should chew it up pretty quickly with his uh, super skill. Are you playing Return to or just the regular version? I think either way, Rex is is going to do pretty well. So we will duke into uh, duke into the ascending path. We're five v four. Um, let's go six v four. Chaos bag says elder sign again. We get to ready duke, and we get a clue. Awesome. Just the regular. Yeah, well, Rex Rex should do pretty well. He's he's very strong. So uh, Zoe's going to have a tough time investigating at the base of the hill, but uh, Rex will uh, Rex should be able to handle that easily enough. So we grabbed a clue and we got to ready Duke. 
which is pretty awesome. Let's duke into this location and uh, see if we can't grab a clue here as well. This is Lost Memories, two shroud location. After you reveal Lost Memories, Uh, lost Memories, Two Shroud Location, One Clue. After you reveal Lost Memories, take one horror for each action you have remaining. I have one action remaining. So, uh, we take a horror. Madame Labranche will do that. I don't know, Peter. This is pretty unusual. I've, I've drawn two Elder Signs and no, uh, no tentacles this game. So that's, uh, that's pretty sweet. Um, Pretty unusual for me, I have to say. Uh, so we are investigating. 5v2. Uh, uh, is it worthwhile going 6v2? It's the minus 5, that's the problem. Um, let's go... Yeah, let's stay at 5v2. It's fine. Chaos bag gives us a minus two. So we grab this clue. I need to spend the clues from the last time. Uh, right, so we've got one clue that we need. He should be uh, there. Now, we want, we've got one action remaining. We can duke back in. We could duke back in to the ascending path to grab a clue. But I'd have to discard a card, which I'm not crazy about. I like the last chance and I like the overpower. Um, let's pitch the overpower to ready Duke, and we'll Duke back in uh, as our final action to go 5v4. We will use a resource on Arcane Studies to go 6v4, and then use uh, Madame to get us a resource. Chaos Bag says, Skull, that's a minus one, because we're not at an altered location, so we grab another clue and another altered path. So sweet. Okay. So assuming next turn that we grab our second clue... we will be in a position to move to Sentinel Peak. Now we can attack Seth, or we can just try to investigate. He's only got three health, and we've got a last chance. But he has retaliate, which is annoying. Uh, we do have Scrapper, though, so we can pump if necessary. So let's uh, get another take heart. Okay, that's that could get us some. That could definitely get us some cards and resources if necessary. Uh, nine of twelve doom on turn six. Encounter card is idle hands. Put idle hands into your threat area. Oh, I remember this one. This is not good. If Idle Hands is in your threat area during your turn, take two damage and discard Idle Hands. You may take an additional action this turn. At the end of your turn, take one horror. Hmm. Uh, do we want to take two damage to take an additional horror? I think we to take an additional action. 
I don't see why not. I don't feel like taking horror, uh, wasting my time taking horror all this time. So let's take the free triggered ability. We'll gain a free action out of the deal, which we can use to grab another resource, I think. So we're going to take two damage. We'll put one on Madame and one on Duke. And so we've got a couple actions. We're going to grab some resources. Yeah, idle hands is fine. I'm, I would rather deal with that than deal with an enemy at this point because I'm pretty close. I'm already like very close to the end here. Uh, and so far it's been smooth sailing, so I'd rather uh, deal with uh, something that I know that I can deal with. Uh, let's duke into the altered path. It is a tear in the path. After you reveal tear in the path, take two damage if you have no actions remaining. I have actions remaining, so... Uh, that's, a, that's one of the problems, I think, with this scenario. Um, one of the things that makes it easier, if you face check it, it can be pretty punishing uh, because you'll hit, those, you'll hit these locations uh, probably without actions. Uh, you'll either have too many actions or you'll have too few, and you'll end up face checking all these locations and really taking it uh, right in the face. But having played this one so many times... I know that I know not to do that. So um, things like tearing the path, it's just like, doesn't matter in the end. It's just like no big deal. So we're going 5v3. Let's go... Uh, let's go 6v3. Chaos Bag says plus 1. So we grab a clue. All right, and we'll use an action to move back to the ascending path. So we've got our two clues. Um, so yeah, we are uh, we're heading up to Sentinel Peak, where we will meet uh, Seth Bishop. We are in uh, very, very good position. Um, we pick up a winging it. Oh, the winging it's already broken again. I always have to fix that. Why would that be broken? I will fix it later. Okay. So during upkeep, we pick up a winging it. That's not going to be super helpful at the moment. Uh, I think we're probably going to kill Seth. We've got lots of resources and a last chance uh, that we can use. And we've got Scrapper, so we can fight him pretty effectively. Retaliate's a bit of a concern, though. We are on turn 7. Uh, there are 10 of 12 Doom in play. Our encounter card is going to be Resurgent Evils. Draw the top two cards of the encounter deck. No thank you. Or place one Doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. Uh, I'm going to do that. We will put a Doom on there and uh, just uh, deal with that that way. All right. We get our three actions back, and we are going into the investigation phase. So we need to hit, we need to hit our buddy here twice. And he's a five and will be a four, but we can pitch a last chance. Uh, we could even commit take heart if necessary. Then we can commit, we can pitch winging it to ready Duke. And that should give us enough, I think. Uh, we 
we've got Scrapper. We can save Scrapper for the second attack. Let's move in. Uh, we have to spend two clues. We move into Sentinel Peak. Four shroud location with two clues forced whenever an investigator at this location draws a hex card. That investigator takes two damage. Uh, so when an investigator enters Sentinel Peak, we advance. Put the set aside Seth Bishop enemy into play at Sentinel Peak. So he will engage us. Act 3A, the gate opens. Only investigators at Sentinel Peak may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. We need two clues, and we need to kill Seth Bishop. All right. Duke, kill. So we'll throw, throw Duke in there. Okay, so what we can do, I think is we'll throw, we're gonna throw the winging it now to ready Duke. To lower our hand size. Then we're gonna pitch, we're gonna commit the last chance. So we're gonna get three icons there. So we're up to four, uh, five, six, seven. 7v5, five. 8v5, five. 8v5, five. Chaos Bag says minus 1, so he takes 2 damage. Alright, um, we will go... Let's attack with Duke again. Uh, we will spend three resources on Scrapper to go 7v5. We'll get uh, Madame Labranche will give us another, so we can go 8v5. Um, 8v5, Chaos Bag says minus 4, shoot, 8v5 does not work, yeah, so he retaliates, so we're going to take a damage and a horror, and then we're going to take another damage and a horror. Well, that was annoying. We had the chance to kill him, and we drew a minus four, so that was kind of a... Uh, uh, sucks, because now we have to uh, kill him without... Uh, so he attacks us, and then we draw our weakness. Look at that. Look at that. That is not what I wanted. Okay, well, we can't really do a whole lot about that. Yeah, take heart to evade is probably the best, uh, the best option. Uh, we'll fail the evade, then we get two cards, two resources. We can attack. Um... Uh, I really want to get rid of him, though. We need to take two actions to get rid of Racked by Nightmares. So we take one attack of opportunity. Well, 
Okay, well, let's see what the Mythos phase has for us. We are at uh, 12 Doom, so we will advance. Uh, shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Sure. All right. All right, so we draw our encounter card, which is going to be another Vortex of Time. Um, takes two damage. Uh, I'm going to take heart that. Because I want the cards and resources now so I can kill him next turn. 4v4. Chaos Bag says minus 1. So we're going to take 2 damage. But we do get 2 cards. Teddy Bear, Leather Coat. Oh, it's a hex card too. Oh shit, I'm going to take a ton of damage then. Take 1 damage. Okay, so I'm going to take a bunch of damage here. That's okay. Okay, so we got a leather coat and the teddy bear and two more resources. Um, hi, Kenyon. Welcome to the stream. Hi, Yan. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Uh, so we're taking two dam uh, three damage. Um, so we're going to lose an ally. Oh shoot, that really hosed us. That really hosed us. Because now I'm sitting on... Yeah, failing that attack against Seth is, is the uh, going to probably kill us here. And everything was going so perfectly up until then. Um, so Madame is gone for sure, and I take a damage. And then I take another damage. So... No, it's not so much that I tempted fate. It's just that I missed a I missed one attack, and uh, and now I'm uh, now I'm in trouble. Now I am in trouble, and I drew my weakness right when I didn't need to draw it. But I mean, that's you can't really do much about that. I guess I could have sat at ascending path and just tried to draw my weakness so I was uh, so to get it out of my deck because it was uh, I was already low it is the investigation phase and we are in deep trouble now hi lettuce folk welcome to the stream glad you could make it you're just in time to watch me probably die So I can't take an attack of opportunity. Maybe I should have just canceled that card, but shoot. I probably should have canceled that. I didn't realize it was a hex card because that would have been three damage. And it's going to be very, very difficult to investigate this location. Um, if he attacks us, Duke dies. which I guess saves me from getting him out. Mm. 
<clears throat> so I'd have one action remaining. I'd have three resources, so I'd be... Yeah, I'd love to, I can't, but the problem is I can't ready, guys, Enoch. I have to take an action to, uh, my weakness prevents me from readying my assets. So my only option is to get rid of my weakness. Yeah, I think you're right, Peter. The uh, I'm dead either way. If I if I take the actions to get rid of the um, racked by nightmares first, he kills Duke, and then I can't attack. And then I'm basically attacking him. If I just straight up attack him, I can get rid of him and then maybe save Duke. So yeah, let's do that. That's all we can do, really. So we'll spend the three resources on Scrapper and Leather Coat. No, you can free trigger actions on the cards. It doesn't turn them off. The, uh, the, uh, it just exhausts the assets. It doesn't mean you can't use them. So, uh, we're going two, three, four, five, six. Six v five. Oh, that's awful. Uh, six v five. This is the game right here. Chaos bag says plus one. <laughs> okay, so we kill him. Unbelievable. Uh, we do a damage to him. And we add them to the, the victory display. Okay, now we... So that was our first action. Yeah, the chaos bag has been, uh, has been very nice. Hi, hippie crap. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Yeah, two elder signs and two plus ones is pretty, pretty nice. Okay, so we can get rid of our, our weakness now. And we're still in the game, somehow. Yeah, I spent too many resources, but uh, I needed to. Uh, so we go to the upkeep. We gain a resource, and we get uh, an overpower. So all we need to do now is investigate twice and we can beat this thing. We also have a... Uh, uh, we've got a winging it in our discard pile. So we may do that. All right. Uh, we've got a test of will, so we can cancel anything that will kill us, I hope. One doom out of ten. Encounter card is going to be the Wizard of Yogg-Sothoth. So I really didn't want to see him. Hexes can be a real pain, yep. I didn't want to see an enemy. At least he's not, uh, he doesn't have, uh, at least he doesn't have retaliate. Well, I can't, I can't do very much about this right now, because I'm going to, uh, 
like if I wanted to end the day, if I wanted to end the end it now, I could go for uh, I can go for uh, winging it, but I need to kill this guy, and he's a four. Man, I wish I had like one more damage in my deck. Um, Duke attacks. So the option is I try to kill this guy or I let Duke die and just go for winging it. But I don't have... Uh, so let's commit the overpower. So four, five, six, six V four. Six V four. Yeah, six V four. Zero. We draw a card. Whoops. All right. Um, four, five, six. Pitch that to Ready Duke. Duke attacks. We commit the a Glimmer of Hope and a resource to go 6v4. Come on, kill this guy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, Add to victory display. Okay. So what we can do next turn. Uh, let me check this here. We've got all three glimmers in our discard pile. So we took two actions to kill that guy. We've got all three glimmers in the deck. So we can take, spend a resource to get all three of those. Then we, we glimmer, winging it for two clues. Yeah, okay, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna, we'll use our last action to gain a resource. And then we'll gain another one during the upkeep. There's Earl Sawyer. Uh, it's nice that he's showing up now, but uh, he's not necessary. Okay, two of ten. Encounter card. Oh, for frick's sakes, with the enemies. Come on. Why am I drawing all the enemies right now? Jesus. Ugh. All I needed was a treachery. Oh, it's great. Oh, farthest location. Oh, thank goodness. You go over there. Oh, I forgot about that. Thank you guys for reminding me. Holy crap. Farthest location from you. So he's way down here. That is fine, fine, fine. Okay. 
So we take an action and spend a resource to pull our glimmers back to our hand. Glimmer, glimmer, glimmer. Yeah, the diverted path way down here, like one of the diverted paths is the furthest. So it's gonna be a while before he comes after us. Uh, so we grab the three glimmers back from our discard pile. Uh, we spend one resource to play. Uh, um, do we want to? So we have a resource. Winging it is going to cost us a resource. Um, where is it? Yeah, yeah, Peter. Probably. Probably. Uh, you may play winging it from your discard pile if you do shuffle it into your deck. Location gets minus one shroud, and if you discover a clue, you get an additional clue. So I'm going to take an action to gain a resource, then I'm going to spend a resource to play winging it from my discard pile. Um, so we're investigating at two versus three. We'll go... Two, three, four, five, six, seven v three. Whoops, seven v three. Chaos bag says, Oh. Cancel the effects and icons of each skill card committed to this test. Oh, skill card. Those aren't skill cards, so we're okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Minus five. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be joking. Oh, I go four up. There's two tokens in a 20 token bag. Honestly. Okay, well. Two, three, four, five, six. Six V three. Seven V three. I was one shy. That is frustrating as all get out. Enemy phase, this guy moves. Well, we get to do it again next turn. Uh, we draw our fight or flight. We know that this is a... We know this is a... Uh, a winging it. All right, three of 10 doom. We draw a rights howl, discard the top three cards of each investigator's deck. Uh, is this an altered location? No, it is not. So we discard the top three cards. So we take a horror. We shuffle that in. And discard two more. Okay. Is that a hex? That is a hex. Okay, I've got to cancel that. Um, yeah, we have to cancel that. So I need to go find... There's only one card in my deck, and it's a winging it. We'll do that there. Is 
Is there, can I just move all to, no. Yeah, that was a hex, we needed to cancel that. Okay, so this is in there. I need to read this card again here. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I don't take the horror. How do we do this? We can investigate with Duke. We can go 5v4. We gain a resource and spend a resource to get our three glimmers back. I think I just have to go 5v4. If we survive this turn, draw it. If we draw a card, or do we try to weather a turn? Gain a resource, get our glimmers back, draw, and then draw the, uh, so gain a resource, whoops, gain a resource, get the glimmers back, Gain a resource, get the glimmers back, draw the winging it. And then reshuffle. And take a horror. So we're we're playing we're taking a risk here. We're gonna just sit this turn out and then go for the gusto next turn this could kill us this could very well kill us but i would rather try to get the two clues in one shot than now a test of will is exiled pizda it's not in the deck anymore All right, so enemy phase, this guy moves here. We're gonna have one turn. We get a resourceful. Okay, that's another, that's another icon. Okay, we can afford to lose Duke here if we have to. 
mythos phase, our card is another vortex of time, and that's a hex. Um, shoot. That's going to cost me a damage. I need to survive this. Gain a resource. It's 4v4. Seven V four. Yeah. Minus four. I'm dead. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Oh, that's disappointing. So, so disappointing. Perfect game until we get to Sentinel Peak. One Chaos Token draw was the difference there. We don't draw the minus five, we, we, we win. That's very disappointing. Uh, I don't even think we could have. Uh, yeah, the only thing we could have done is spent the extra, the extra resource. But then we wouldn't have been in position to deal to to grab these two clues. So we had to. That is really unfortunate. We had the game in the bag and then and then just one chaos token pull changed it. Can't do anything about that. That's RNG for you. We were four up and we only had two tokens in a twenty token bag and we should have had uh Yeah, well, we would have we would have lost Duke a turn a turn a turn anyway that turn anyway, so it wouldn't have it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, if we had lost Duke last turn, I still would have taken, I still would have done what I did because going five v four isn't going to be enough. I mean, if I investigate three times, um, I would have done it there, of course, when I. I draw a plus one, minus one, and then a, and then a, a redraw. So it was a it was a a, a calculated risk, and uh, and it didn't uh, work out. Yeah, there's a minus five. So yeah, that's uh, honestly this one seems to be the. Uh, the scenario of all of the return to scenarios that I've played from the Dunwich Legacy. This one seems to have changed the least. Um, I mean, the biggest change, obviously, is to the base of the hill and ascending path, which made it uh, very easy for us to grab our clues and head up to the Sentinel Peak. Um, no real changes as far as enemies go. Um, not many ch like no change as far as Seth goes um, I think we only saw one of the new encounter cards I mean we drew vortex of time three times so you know that's 
That's unfortunate because we also ended up with three V. We would have had uh, five VPs out of this too if we had. Uh, if we had. Uh, uh, I like Glimmer. Glimmer is pretty good. I mean, we had. It was three icons. I didn't have otherwise, right? Because uh, if I had passed that. Uh, if I had passed that test, I could have uh, gained a resource, gained all the glimmers back, and then still uh, winging, winging it at uh, 5v3, uh, 6v3. So, I mean, glimmer gives you that option, right? It doesn't, uh, without it, you don't have that uh, ability, but... Uh, so yeah, if if I had succeeded, I would have been going 6v3 um, next test for the win. Yeah, I hate losing that way. I hate losing to to random RNG. I'd rather the I would rather the encounter deck just combo me out using enemies or um, just really uh, like pound me with enemies or make me lose on skill tests that I had no business passing in the first place not lose when I'm when I'm three up which you know technically you know the odds the odds are that you pass that skill test so it's it's frustrating when that happens but oh well I guess that's where our campaign is going to end um, I thought I had that one, but uh, unfortunately the chaos bag had other uh, other plans in the end. Uh, we just needed to to survive one turn. Uh, well, we didn't even we shouldn't have even had to survive that one turn. We would have done okay. And uh, so that will wrap up my uh, campaign through uh, Return to the Dunwich Legacy. Ashcan uh, did a very an excellent job. I thought uh, we did. Uh, we only had the two hiccups, those being the Miskatonic Museum and uh, and Essex County Express, where both of those were uh, disastrous scenarios. But we did very well through Blood on the Altar and very well through, uh, uh, well, we did a passable job through Undimensioned and Unseen, and we should have won this one as far as I'm concerned. So I thought Ashcan did a pretty good job. Uh, I was, uh, I am wondering, since there are so many people here today, what is the next campaign that you would like to see? Hi, Gen Chaos. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I, there are many different options. So if there is something that you would, uh, the next campaign you would like to see as a campaign and characters, um, uh, let me know what campaign you'd like to see and let me know which characters you'd like to see. So you can either uh, just leave a message uh, for me in the chat now or you can uh, you can uh, contact me on my Facebook page or you can send me a, um, an email at manfromlang at gmail.com and let me know what... Uh, Yeah, I'm I'm still finishing the the Dream Eaters, but I'm my plan is to finish the Dream Eaters with uh, I have uh, I'm running Dream Side with Luke Robinson and Waking Side with uh, uh, Waking Side with uh, what's her name uh, Patrice. So uh, that is uh, I'm going to be working on those games here probably this weekend. Uh, return to Carcosa or Circle Undone. Uh, yeah, Circle Undone. I haven't played Circle Undone two-handed. That would be uh, that would be different. I have not played Carolyn. Uh, I've well I've played her once badly. Um, so she would be, uh, that would be an option. 
I mean, there's lots of... Uh, any recommendations for a partner for Ashcan? We were thinking of revisiting Dunwich with new investigators. Um, I think pretty much anybody partners well with Ashcan. Ashcan is, is such a well-rounded investigator that... Uh, Two-handed circle with Carolyn and Tony. Oh, that'd be that would be interesting. I know I've uh, with uh, Tim Fiscus and I played Union and Disillusion with Jenny and Tony, and uh, we beat it. Mandy and Tom. I haven't played Mandy. Uh, I haven't played Tommy either. So maybe that would be interesting. Uh, Mandy and Tommy. Part of me feels as though I should also play Return to Lost in Time and Space, even if I just play it as a standalone uh, with Ashcan, since we did, we should have gotten there. Uh, my favorite duo is Tony and Luke. Yeah, I'm playing Luke in the Dream Eaters. Finn and Ursula? Yeah, I haven't played Mandy at all. Actually, I, I tend not to play Seeker all that often. The last time I played Seeker was I played Ursula at uh, Arkham Knights. Uh, I played Ursula in the, uh, in the Iron Man. So maybe Mandy and Tommy. I kind of like that that idea because I I haven't played either of those investigators yet. So that would be that would be interesting. Um. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Again, if you uh, have any suggestions, I will uh, I'll put my email address in the uh, chat here so you can you can send me an email if you have. Uh, if you brainstorm. Yeah, Gen Chaos, I could proxy. The only uh, starter investigator I can proxy is uh, is Winifred. Uh, we don't know the other's uh, cards. We do know, um, we know Harvey Walter's signature asset, but we don't know his signature weakness, which I feel like could be pretty significant because he's going to be he's going to draw a ton of cards so that would be uh, probably something that hits his hand hard or prevents him from drawing or something like that but Winifred's the only one that we can proxy properly I know I was thinking of doing something with uh, playing a campaign with Dexter because we do know Dexter is a 0-2 rogue uh, but playing a uh, Playing solo mystics is a bit tricky. Uh, and I did it with Diana recently, so um, we shall see. So maybe Mandy and Tommy. Um, oh, congratulations, you received 100 messages today with Restream Chat. Well, wow, thank you very much, Restream. Did they reveal Stella's signature? Where did they do that, Jan? Because hers is her signature is like three cards. She gets three cards, if I remember correctly. I mean, you could work around the the weakness. You could just play two weaknesses instead of one. But it really, it really depends whether her signature weak, like if her signature weakness is on the yellow king level, then it's a real pain. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up. Then maybe it was, maybe it's on Reddit or something like that. <laughs> yeah, Harvey could use Vengeful Hound. Uh, 
Oh, drawn to the flame revealed signatures for Stella. Okay. Okay. Well, I will uh, I will check that out then and uh, and see. I assume then that probably Mythos Busters will have one as well. Yeah, they they I was getting spoilers for a while, but then uh, when uh, FFG went through its big uh, downsizing, uh, the spoilers seem to have gotten lost in the shuffle. So unfortunately, but. Uh, all right. Well, it sounds like Circle Undone is uh, is what people would uh, be interested in seeing, and we'll play it with some new investigators, and we will see how we do. But uh, it's going to be a few days yet before I uh, settle on anything. So do send an email, manfromlang@gmail.com, and uh, and let me know if there's a particular investigator you have your heart set on uh, set on seeing. They're on their Facebook, but I linked them. Okay, well, then I'll check out the Great Old Ones Discord and uh, see them there. Thanks, Juicy. Um, so I think that's going to do it for me today. Yeah, that's disappointing. I hate when I lose that way, but that's the chaos bag for you. You can't, uh, there's not much you can do about that. So uh, I will be back. I may end up playing uh, Return to Lost in Time and Space with uh, with Ashcan just to uh, as a standalone, just to see how it is, uh, because otherwise I probably will never play it. Uh, uh, it's probably one of those. I it, I've played Lost in Time and Space more than the other final scenarios, but uh, but the final scenarios I just tend not to play all that often. So I, I should take the opportunity when I have the chance. Uh, that is going to do it for me today. Thank you very much, everyone, for uh, tuning in to the stream today. It was great to have you along for the ride, even uh, as heartbreaking as it was. Um, I will be back uh, Friday. I will be streaming on Friday, same time, 11 uh, p.m. my time, 1 p.m. Eastern. So I hope that you will uh, tune in then. We will uh, either play Lost in Time and Space or kick off a new campaign, one or the other. Uh, until then, I hope uh, everyone stays uh, safe and healthy out there. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Uh, it's more important uh, than ever uh, right now. So I, I hope that you will uh, tune in then. Thanks everyone for the help and uh, the stream and uh, we will see you uh, on Friday. That is going to do it for this stream. If you enjoyed this content, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I am also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there and happy investigating. <laughs>